Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about summer jobs during university and all the tips and tricks on how to get them, my advice, just any kind of questions maybe anyone has about them. But yeah, I just wanna basically run through the whole process of getting a summer job during university and maybe just any tips I've had um, with my two different summer jobs that I had throughout my degree. So let's get right into it. First thing that I wanted to talk about is why you should get a summer job. This question obviously is pretty self-explanatory. A summer job looks great on your resume for when you graduate and you're looking for a professional job after university. It's, it's great to have that professional work experience in a summer throughout your degree. Also, if you don't end up getting just the four month summer job, a lot of people generally go and get a 12 to 16 month uh, internship is more kind of what they're called but this video i did want to gear more towards summer jobs just because that's been my experience i really debated taking an internship in university and i actually had an offer for an internship that i decided not to take but i can touch on that in another video if enough people want a video about internships so let me know so that leads into the main places to look for a summer job so there are a variety of ways that you can look for a summer job probably the first one and top one that everyone goes to is your university's job board most and i would say probably all universities have a job board whether it's called my careers which was what my university's was called but basically this is just a huge job board of any job, whether it's post-grad jobs, summer jobs, internships, um, they're all on here. So learning how to navigate your university's job board is super important. Usually it's pretty much as simple as typing in summer jobs and maybe curating it towards your specific degree. And then the next probably best place to look for a summer job would be LinkedIn. So there are always tons of jobs posted on LinkedIn. I would say probably my best advice on looking for a summer job on LinkedIn is just to go to jobs, put in maybe the location you wanna get a summer job or just put any location. You can set it obviously to worldwide or however you wanna do that. And then just look up summer student job and then you can also put in a keyword, maybe engineering, which would be what I would have done um, or whatever specific degree maybe you're looking to gain experience in. I personally never had experience looking on Indeed for summer jobs, but I'm sure that companies as well, when they're trying to get a job posting out there, they kind of post it as many places as you can. So for the most part, I would say Indeed summer job postings are similar to LinkedIn ones, but you never know. Sometimes companies um, won't use LinkedIn as much or they'll use Indeed more. So yeah, definitely check kind of all of those websites. Then the next place you can go and look for a job is to have a specific company in mind that you wanna work for. Say you wanna work for a bank, say you wanna work for Facebook, uh, anything like that you should go to their careers website and maybe key in summer job, put a notification. Many companies will allow you to hook up your email to get job posting notifications based on kind of what you've put in for your search criteria. So you can do that if you have a specific company you're really passionate about working for. Just make sure that you never miss a job posting that they've put out. Then finally, my experience getting a first summer job was actually by word of mouth. So my friend's older sister had just finished a summer job working um, for a company. She was two years older than me, and, but we were in the same degree. So, so she let me know that her company had posted their summer jobs and it actually was pretty early on. It was in early September. So I was really glad that she let me know or else um, I probably wouldn't have applied because you're not really thinking about applying to jobs um, in September. So yeah, word of mouth is really great maybe uh, there's people in older years that had a job that you're really interested in. You could ask them, hey, um, how did you get this job? What's kind of your advice on this? Or again, just using your network, using your friends, as well as obviously your family. A lot of people get jobs just kind of through um, family connections as well. So yeah, there's a variety of ways to look for a summer job. <laughs> The next question would be when to apply to a summer job. So I would say that my first tip on this is it's never too early to start looking for summer jobs. Some summer jobs are literally posted like the summer before they're about to happen. So literally a year in advance, which is kind of crazy because I feel like in the summer, no one's kind of thinking about what they're doing next summer. But that's actually can be the best time to apply for a job if it's in the summer before the next summer, because generally summer 
postings, you would probably see less people applying to it. So more of an opportunity for you to kind of get your foot in the door and show that you're a go-getter, you're, you've got your stuff together this like a year before. But again, summer jobs are posted kind of throughout the year. So they'll start getting posted the beginning of September and they'll get posted all the way until literally right before they could start. My experience with summer jobs is my first one, I applied literally the beginning of September before university had even started. And then the application process was about a month later, late September, early October. And then kind of like a couple weeks after that was when offers went out. So it was kind of mid October that you had a summer job lined up. But then actually the next summer I ended up getting a job in March, so like three months before it was supposed to start. So you never really know, just always keep your eye out. And if you don't have a job lined up the summer before in September, don't be concerned. More will come out and you'll be all good. <laughs> so the next thing you're probably thinking is what kind of experience should you have when applying to a summer job? For the most part, you're in university. You've never had professional work experience. You've only had maybe crappy high school jobs. <laughs> And some people might have even not had crappy high school jobs. So what kind of experience is best that people are looking for? So, I mean, in my experience, I touched on my high school job and I had a job after first year that was just in the restaurant industry. So I mean a job, but obviously nothing professional related to my degree. But if you don't have any work experience at all, it's really easy to pull on different experiences such as joining a club, talking about any volunteering you've done, talking about your degree, all the projects you've worked on and how you've developed those skills throughout your degree. Sports teams are a great point of conversation. Obviously companies are looking for people who've worked on a team before and especially obviously in engineering and so many other disciplines, you're always working on group projects so you can really draw on those experiences and um, use that when applying to jobs. So next up is what kind of documents should you have when you're applying to a job? So obviously first and foremost, you wanna have a polished resume. This is super important. You really want to put as much effort and time into your resume as possible. And what should you have on your resume? On your resume, you should have any past work experience you've had, what degree you're taking. I never was one to put my GPA on, the, on my resume, but you can put your GPA on there if it's really stellar and pretty impressive. Um, I was always kind of middle of the range, so I never really wanted to showcase my resume or my GPA but people do that, of course. Any volunteering I did, um, any clubs I was a part of, that looks really great on your resume, as well as just those hard and soft skills, whether it's programming, whether it's communication skills, whether it's teamwork, you know, all those things should kind of be incorporated on your resume somehow. Also, most companies will ask you for a cover letter. So it's good to have kind of a shell of a cover letter. Again, a polished cover letter looks great. Draw on those past experiences as well. Always make sure you're curating your cover letter to the job you're applying to. Make sure you're putting maybe any skills in the job description into your cover letter. You're putting maybe like something you like about the company, showing you've done your research on the company, why you wanna work for them. That's always great stuff to incorporate in your cover letter. Also, in my experience, most companies will ask for any kind of unofficial transcripts. This um, goes away mostly kind of after you graduate. No one really looks for your transcripts, but for summer jobs, obviously companies want to make sure that you're a decent student. So a lot of times they will ask for an unofficial transcript. Those are really easy to get. You can just download a PDF. You shouldn't have to pay for it. But yeah, you just add that as an attachment to your job application. Another thing I wanna throw in here as well is a lot of companies nowadays use the scannable resumes. So make sure that when it scans your resume and it puts all your information in, that it's all correct, that it all transferred over correctly, um, kind of anything you had on your resume is in a similar format on whether it's Workday, whether it's any kind of other employment gateway that companies have. You really wanna make sure that that's all in there and that's in there correctly because that's a really easy way to get your application thrown out if the information that's put in is just all over the place and it just didn't transfer over correctly. Other things you should be prepared for when applying to a job is a lot of times they'll send you some kind of skill assessment. Um, in my experience for summer jobs, I was never really sent a skill assessment, but I'm sure nowadays they probably do. Um, in a lot of post-grad jobs, they'll have skill assessments. Obviously that'll be curated to whatever type of um, job you're applying for. In my experience, I was a chemical engineer, so I wasn't doing a lot of um, programming or 
stuff like that. But again, a computer, computer engineer would probably be asked to maybe program something if that's kind of what they're applying for. So yeah, just be prepared for that. Now let's jump into the actual interview process and questions. So you've applied for the job, um, your, res your resume and your application has gone through and they want to set up an interview with you. In my experience, all my interviews for summer jobs were either over the phone or on a Zoom call. That's just because students are all over the place and um, you could be applying for a job in your hometown, but you're at school somewhere else. So generally they'll be virtual. And also in my experience, I only ever had one interview. Again, every company is different. You might have multiple interviews, first with HR, um, some kind of phone screening, just to answer some basic questions. And then you go in and you meet the actual manager. It'll depend obviously on the company. So then when you're preparing for the interview, um, my biggest advice on this is to obviously do some research into the company, find out if they've got a mission statement, find out any cool projects maybe they're working on that excite you. Just kind of do that research and I would recommend making some jot notes kind of beside you. Likely your interview will be virtual, so it's good to have those jot notes and it's good to try to memorize them. You don't really want to try to be uh, looking over notes while you're in the interview. So if you kind of have um, a solid understanding of who they are as a company and what they stand for, that's the best uh, that you can do. And then of course you always want to prepare for the why do you want to work for this company question. Again, you can tie in their mission statement, um, what they stand for into that answer. Another common question is why do you think you're a good fit for this job? So with this, you can tie in any of your past experiences, your education, any clubs, any past work, and just kind of apply it to the job description. Another question that I got asked a couple times was um, explain a situation of conflict and how you resolved it. Obviously, I had never had professional work experience, so this goes back to drawing on my past experience working in a restaurant. I just talked about how it was a stressful work environment and how you really just have to own your mistakes and find out the best way to fix them. That's pretty much all anyone is looking for uh, <laughs> when answering that question. So, And then a tip as well is to try to have one or two questions prepared to ask at the end. This is always when they open up the floor to you, it's always good to kind of have a couple questions prepared to ask them, whether it's maybe their favorite project they've worked on, the culture of the company, um, any just basic questions about the job, the hours you'll be working, you know, stuff like that. It's good to always ask questions at the end as well, as well as following up after the interview. This is actually something I never did for my summer job interviews that I still ended up getting, but <laughs> after, graduating university and interviewing a couple people in my job now, um, it really does stand out when someone kind of sends you an email a couple hours after and just says, thank you for your time. Um, I look forward to kind of hearing from you guys. Someone who does that versus someone who doesn't, it's not a make or break, but it really does stick out in your mind when you're kind of considering the best candidate. So yeah, would recommend following up. And now to kind of finish up the video, I wanted to do a top five tips on applying to summer jobs, getting summer jobs, and just kind of my experience with it. My first top tip is when you're looking at jobs and you see something, maybe it doesn't entirely fit with your skills or experience, I would apply to it anyway if it's something you're interested in. Don't just throw away kind of any job that you see and write yourself off. I would try applying to pretty much as many as you can. You just never really know which one's actually going to get through the system. It's kind of tricky these days to, to even just get an interview. So I definitely would recommend just applying to as many as you can. So tip number two would be always make sure that whatever documents you're submitting are in PDF form. No one wants to get a Word document. PDF is kind of how the professional world works. And I know obviously as an undergrad, I feel like I was not as experienced with PDF as I am now, but just make sure everything you submit is in PDF. <laughs> so with that, tip number three is spell check everything 20 times. You do not want to have your application thrown out because you've misspelled a word. You maybe missed a word. 
You just want to make sure that you can do everything you can possible to try to get through the application process. And a lot of times systems like that will just completely throw your resume slash cover letter out the window if you have a mistake because it just shows that you don't have attention to detail. So definitely make sure to double check, triple check, get your friends, get your mom, get your dad to look over your resume and your cover letter to look for any mistakes, it definitely will save you in the long run. So now tip number four is I would recommend making sure that your resume is one page. I know this is a little bit of a tricky topic. I mean, if you have a ton of experience, obviously you wanna to try to put it all in your resume, but from my experience and in my first job out of university, my boss said that he was really impressed with my application because he was always told that a resume should be one page and my resume was one page. When someone's giving it a quick glance over, it just, it should be one page. It's just a lot easier for a person to read it over and kind of get a little bit of an idea of what you're about as a person. So yeah, would recommend one page. Now, tip number five and my last tip is try to diversify your experience as much as you can. I think one of my biggest regrets in university was not joining more clubs, not joining more things I was passionate about, just because I was so overwhelmed with school and so overwhelmed with the workload, I just didn't think that I could swing it. But honestly, in the long run and on a resume, having more clubs over a stellar GPA, a lot of companies will will appreciate the club and experience and effort you've put into actual real life things over having a 4.0 GPA. So that's just my opinion, but I wish that I joined more clubs throughout university for sure. So, but yeah, that's all for this week's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any other videos you'd like to see on this topic, on getting a job post-grad, internships, anything, be sure to let me know. But thanks guys, bye.